Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a second card featuring the brand new Pink Fresh Studio Holiday 2021 release. And I'm using a hot foil plate that is not necessarily holiday. I think you could use it all year round. Here's a look at the four hot foil backgrounds that were released in this release, and I absolutely love them. Keep in mind, you can use this for embossing cardstock as well. And today I'm going to be using this really modern looking abstract triangles hot foil plate. So in order to do my foiling, I'm gonna use my Gemini foil press. I have it turned on and heating up to the medium heat setting. And I'll be using the Glimmer foil with this. So this foil is designed to work with hot foil plates such as this, but it is the Glimmer brand. It is not the Crafter's Companion brand. And this is in the color Champagne. And I've laid it down with the pretty side of the foil facing the hot foil plate. So the dull or less shiny or less pretty side is going to face my paper. Now today I'm using the Hammer Mill color copy. I don't know exactly what it is. It's a hundred pound cardstock. It's super smooth. I will have it linked in the description below and it is great for foiling. So once I have that on there, I'm gonna run it through my Gemini Junior to apply the pressure, and this is the result here. It is absolutely beautiful. It kind of looks like shattered glass. And when I saw this, I really wanted to mask off the various triangles within this design and create a very colorful background. Now, because I'm using some more holiday-like colors, this works for a holiday card, but you could also change up the colors and use this for really any occasion. It would be really cool to pick some kind of Halloween-like colors like that bougie tag that I shared last week and do something like this for Halloween as well. Now you're gonna see that I actually started out by using some delicate surface painter's tape to do my masking. And I'm using a blending brush and the Pink Fresh Studio Coral Reef ink to blend my first triangle here. Now once I get the ink blended in that triangle, I'm gonna actually remove, I'm gonna actually wipe the tape first, and then I'm gonna remove this piece of tape and move it to where I can then ink blend over the next triangle. Now I have to tell you, this was my first attempt at ink blending this pattern or this background, and I have to tell you, I made a few mistakes along the way. <laughs> But I left it in to share it with you because I kind of looked back and I thought, what can I do to save somebody else from the mistakes that I made? And I'm going to tell you that the first mistake that I made was using this delicate surface painter's tape. And the reason, there are two reasons. Number one, this has a very slick surface. It will not absorb any of the ink. The ink will kind of float on top of it. And as a result, I ended up getting ink all over my fingers and I ended up transferring it to several places in the background. So that was number one mistake. The other reason that I did not like this delicate surface painter's tape for this background, and you can see there's some messy areas. It doesn't look that bad. I could probably cut it down and make it work. But I decided to go ahead and give it another go. But when I pulled up that delicate surface painter's tape, because this hammer mill cardstock is so smooth, it actually ripped it in a couple of areas. And so I decided to give this another go, and this time I'm using post-it tape to do my masking, and I'm making sure that I get right up on the foil line. Now, the post-it tape worked a little better, and the reason is that the post-it tape is like paper. So it absorbs some of that ink that kind of goes over onto it by virtue of masking. You know, you're masking, you're gonna blend over that area. And so instead of that transferring to my fingers and then to my project in other areas, I got a much cleaner result. And so I was much happier. The other thing that happened was I didn't end up ripping my cardstock. So for this particular project, I really felt that the post-it tape worked much better. Now you could also use post-it notes or you could use some masking paper instead if you don't have the post-it tape, and I think those would work. And you'll notice here that I actually left some of the triangles white, and that was intentional because I wanted to bring in that fourth quote-unquote color. Now, once I have my background blended, and by the way, I used evergreen, 
Olive, and Coral Reef from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm gonna use this rectangle die and die cut it down. This is gonna be a very small rectangle for the center of my A2 size card. Now this particular rectangle die also cuts a very thin frame around the outside. And I had this one little white area and I was like, no, it needs color right there. <laughs> So I grabbed a couple of the pieces of post-it tape, which by the way, you can reuse throughout this process, and I blended this little corner here. Now another thing I wanted to mention about reusing the post-it tape is once it got pretty mucky and the colors were kind of like bleeding into each other or it got too saturated with ink, I did change out my post-it tape in order to prevent cross-contamination. And that's why I got a much cleaner result the second time around than the first time. So I have my die cut rectangle here and I have the little frame. I've just gone ahead and used some low tack tape to keep the frame in place around the inner rectangle. And I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive to adhere the frame into the center of an A2 size top folding card. So this card base measures four and a quarter by 11 inches and it's scored at five and a half inches. And that creates a five and a half by four and a quarter finished card size. Now, once I get just the frame glued down, I'm gonna remove that tape there, and I'm gonna remove the inner rectangle. And this piece, I'm going to actually pop up using some foam adhesive. Now, I did wanna mention that this card base is made from a linen cardstock, and I think when a card is this clean and simple, this can really make a difference. Now I have some foiled sentiments here. These are actually from the Thrill of Hope hot foil set that was also released with the Pink Fresh Studio Holiday 2021 release. And I've die cut four extra of the plain white die cut. And I'm gonna glue those and stack those together to create a stacked up sentiment. Now I kinda had to go back in time here <laughs> in the video because this was, I put this together when my first attempt was done and I filmed it then and my rectangle was not on my card, but you get the gist, right? You're gonna foil your sentiment, stack it up, and then I'm gonna place it on the card. Now I did add one of my favorite Pink Fresh Studio die cuts here. This is the Curvy Leaves die set. I've die cut it from some vellum and then I'm going to attach it onto my card front using that liquid glue. Once I got everything kind of lined up, I was able to kind of just sneak the tip of my glue under there. And then I'm going to add my sentiment that has all of that dimension on it using the same liquid glue from Barely Arts. And I really am enjoying this glue. So once I got that positioned on there, I just finished off the card by adding a few of the Pink Fresh Studio crystals on here, which aren't on here right here, but you will see them in the photos to follow. And that finishes off my really modern, foiled, masked, and ink blended card. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. And really, you could change up the colors and the sentiment on this card and use it any time of the year. I think it is absolutely beautiful. It would make a really great masculine birthday card as well, or some sort of like congratulations card. I think it just is so versatile. And I think this background is just something that you will find yourself using over and over again. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube, but you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I will have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies, as well as information on an Instagram hop that's happening today over on my Instagram, and I will have my Instagram linked below as well. There you will find chances to win 10, one of 10 $25 Pink Fresh gift cards and the entire new Pink Fresh holiday release. So you'll wanna head over there and check that out ASAP so you don't miss your chances to enter. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel. Drop me a comment and let me know that you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.